Hi, this is your 2019 yearly horoscopes with me, Lada, from astrolada.com. Thank you for choosing me to be your guide for the year 2019. I feel very flattered. Uh, and I just want, before we start, and this is the intro for all 12 signs, but it's important for you to watch it. And before I start for each sign, I want to invite you to join me in a little prayer, no matter who you believe in. Uh, and what you believe in, just to focus our energy and to benefit the most through this reading. Dear Mother, Father, Universe, God, uh, exalted angels, guardians of every human, those that are helping the evolution of humanity and of every individual person, please bless everyone who watches those videos and the whole world in 2019. Let those videos and the information that is given here be useful to everyone so everyone can use it to the most constructive possible ways to the highest vibration of the planets and even if there are challenging periods and moments in our life in 2019 let this video and this information give us not only clarity but the meaning and understanding of those more painful experiences that are in front of us so we realize that life is not an adversary to battle with and conquer that life is our benevolent good partner that is trying to lead us to discover our true authenticity is trying to lead us to a place of happiness to a place of truthfulness so let this year 2019 and the information we receive here let us use it to the highest good for everyone involved and let us be able to utilize the planetary energies to help ourselves to uplift ourselves and those around us amen so I want to for you to benefit the most. Thank you so much for joining me, by the way, in the prayer. So for you to benefit the most from this, I want you to take a pen and paper and write down three things. And some of you would be just listening to your sun sign. Others would be just listening to your moon sign. Others bought all the 12 videos. So you'll be, be able to be watching your ascendant sun and moon. But I always advise you watch your ascendant sign because if you go to a professional astrologer they would look at your ascendant and how the planets are in correspondence where they're moving from that ascendant and nowadays more and more astrologers are using the ancient time of astrology which is whole sign house system so these videos are perfect the whole sign house system is what very when first astrologers created it the system they were using it so uh, without the house cusps and anything so the ascendant is the point of incarnation of the physical body. So it's, it is the of the soul into the physical body. It is the physical bodies. That's why it shows the most tangible things that are happening to us. That's why I always advise check the prognosis for your ascendant sign. Uh, the moon sign is our inner world, how we feel our self-consciousness. Um, so the moon usually manifests the second most powerful after the ascendant sign because we especially strongly identify with how we feel about something and something that impacts us emotionally uh, and even though for example from the ascendant some big event might be happening like changing of place of living but in the moon from the moon it's shown that for example uh, you will be having a quarrel with a friend for you this will be a way bigger deal because emotionally this feels much stronger for you uh this quarrel with a friend for example than uh the relocation that's happening but from the ascendant it shows the specific things that are happening in your life in a tangible way because the ascendant is the material body and what is happening to us on our path in that material body and the sun sign is what most of the people only check and uh but that's pop astrology but still the sun sign is very important the sun sign is our willpower our goals uh it's our um, ability to channel divine intelligence and the sun sign will show us looking at the prognosis from the sun sign will show us especially the things that we are striving towards to achieve uh consciously and uh, the prognosis for the sun sign we tend to have more uh free will over that prediction uh what you're gonna read because the sun is connected to free will while the moon symbolizes the past these are things that often happen the prediction from the moon are encoded from the past while from the ascendant sign it's sealed in stone so to speak you know 
Uh, so yes, checking the sun sign is very important, especially because you can direct the events there more with your free will. The moon sign, you feel like it's more fated and it affects your feelings the most in your personal life. And the ascendant sign is the most tangible event. So I would advise start with the ascendant sign and progress. And for you to know though, a lot of people don't know, the sun sign is the one that everyone speaks about, you know, like, oh, what are you, I'm an Aries. It means I'm born from March the 20th to April 20th, something like that. But, uh, and I can give you predictions for, oh, if you're born from Mar March 1st to March 5th, uh, this and this will be happening for you. But every year they change, the sun moves into a different sign a day before or after. And I want to be way more precise for you. So instead of giving you days, we're gonna find the degrees of your sun, the degrees of your moon, and the degrees of your ascendant signs. And for some of you, the moon and the ascendant might be the same or the sun and the moon, rarely, but it happens. So for you to find this out, I want you to, and I'm gonna share my screen with you. Um, let me just. Here it is, share. So I hope you see it. Go to my burst uh, website, astrolada.com, you see it here and go to the birth chart and transits. Or if you have any other astrology calculator, I don't mind as long as it gives you the information that I'm going to show. So here I'm gonna put a fictitious person, let's say whatever name, write your name. So you're born in August the 6th, 2000, um, 1972, for example, at 8 a.m. or Make sure that if you're born later, you check if it's 8 p.m., 20, you know. And it's important for your correct ascendant and for the degree, in particular for the ascendant and the direct degree of the moon, the correct sign and degree of the moon, for you to know your minute of birth. If you don't know it within 15, 20 minutes, the degree of the ascendant might be three or four degrees off, but the moon degree would usually be correct. But say you're born 8, 17, and say so you're born in the USA and you're born in New York and you have you have the drop down menu which New York are you born in well there are many New Yorks say New York hospital whatever and continue press continue and then you're gonna get this chart and I want you to scroll down you see not here but here inside and you're gonna see this which shows planetary details and I want you to, there is abbreviation of Ascendant, Sun, and Moon. This is the only work you have to do after that. Just listen and enjoy and wait to hear your degrees. Uh, I mean, I'll be speaking generally about each sign, but especially when I mention the degree of the sign that you have. Uh, this is when things are going to, you know, you're going to feel them so intensely. So this person, for example, has ascendant, which means your rising sign is the same. Ascendant, rising means the same. Uh, the physical body it is at 20 degrees Aquarius. I want you to write just the first degree. The second one is not so important. This is 28 minutes. This is very minimal. So 20 degrees, write down on a piece of paper, Aquarius 20 degrees. You have to watch the video for Aquarius. And every time I mention Aquarius born, say, from 17 to 21 degrees and you're 20, uh, they'll experience this in particular this year. And you should be like, okay, this is very specific for you. It's going to manifest. You're going to feel it. Then write down your sun sign. This person, for example, has sun at 14 degrees Leo and the moon sign. The moon sign for this person is at 16 degrees Cancer. So if you've bought, for example, if your sun is in Leo, make sure that you know the degree for your sun. So in this case, you know, this is the, the sign. The sun is the sign everyone knows. I'm a Leo, I'm a Virgo, you know. So, but make sure you check the degree of your sun. Check the degree of your sun. Check the degree of your ascendant or moon, whichever one you're waiting. And then, so for example, if you have the all 15 videos, this person has to check the video for Aquarius, Leo, and Cancer. So I hope it's not too complicated. It's actually quite simple. You can watch the video a few times to understand what it means. But now know the degree. 
write it down, have it on a piece of paper, and whatever you're listening to, if it's your moon sign that you're listening, knowing the degree, when you hear your moon degree, you're like, ting, that's specific for me. For the ascendant sign, overall, the whole prediction is very correct. While for the sun and moon sign, again, you would feel it maybe to a lesser degree, but especially when I mention your sun or moon degree, this is going to, it's happening. Whatever I talk about, it's happening. You feel it strongly. It's going to be so important for you that year. So with that introduction, thank you so much. And we're going to start with the science one by one. Gemini 2019. Let's start with the lighter stuff, the uplifting. Let's start on a positive note because Jupiter will be in your seventh house. In the seventh sign, whether it's your sun in Gemini, your moon, or your ascendant, you're going to notice that there will be new people entering your life. The seventh house is the other. The first house, which is your sign, sun, moon, or ascendant, symbolizes you. Seventh house is others, and whatever Jupiter passes it expands that area of experience it brings beneficial new beginnings there that can benefit us actually for the next 12 years so expect some interesting new people to enter your life and they won't be just like some uh, you know general acquaintance it will be something more intense something more significant so to speak in your life someone that you have more one-to-one -one time with and it can be a friend but on many people for many people when you with the transit the seventh house it can also in, indicate a partner and this is a blessing from god because jupiter gives us good things good karma so it will be someone that is gonna help you in your life someone that is going to uh be like like a healing uh, influence in your life or like an influence of inspiration that brings some kind of new opportunities and some new exciting horizons from you if you're looking for inspiration if you're looking for excitement in 2019 if you're looking for new horizons and expansion it's gonna come to you through another person it might be through a business partnership through some agreement or just another person like a new partner new marriage new business partner of some sort and for example i got married to my first husband when jupiter was transiting the seventh house from my ascendant so yes that can bring marriages as well taking a relationship to the next level and then i got married the second time with my current husband when jupiter was transiting the seventh house the seventh sign from my sun sign and from venus mercury and mars <laughs> but it see this works when jupiter transits the seventh house new experience new relationships come to us so we can take a relationship to the next level and usually it's for good it's a positive influence for you and both times when i got married with jupiter in the seventh house both times those relationships were really good in my life and they were really helpful in making me grow and uh, uh, one was connected with a lot of is connected with a lot of joy the other one was connected not so much with joy as with growth and um, opportunities for growth and development so Jupiter brings either the joy or growth but it comes through another it comes through some kind of someone uh, through 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 uh, stimulation from another person or by meeting another person of some sort if you're already married it can indicate that something good and new opportunities are coming into the life of your marriage partner it might be like a new beginning of some sort that is coming from your marriage partner maybe they can start studying or maybe they can uh, discover some new field of interest that expands them makes them more kinder open-minded broader and that reflects good on your relationship if you've had some troubles in your relationship jupiter will reconnect you when it transits the seventh house so it will smooth out the relationship travels and it might be even if you had some bad business contracts or whatever jupiter will either or business relationships with clients and one-to-one -one, jupiter can improve these relationships can bring you more benefit a mutual benefit a equally mutual benefit and even sometimes when i see someone and they're in a difficult situation in their marriage and jupiter is going to transit their seventh house very often i advise them to wait till then because usually the relationship improves after that uh, but at the same time 
if it's a relationship that is totally not negotiable and it's been very painful Jupiter transiting the seventh house can liberate you separate you I've seen in rare occasions that Jupiter through the seventh house can bring a separation with a partner but it's felt more like a release and often a new partner appears soon uh, soon after that usually within the time that Jupiter is in the seventh house uh, also uh, it can indicate that some very beneficial contract is coming into your life or agreement or collaboration with someone maybe a business collaboration of some sort uh, accept it because whatever Jupiter brings it always it's going to be influence that helps you in some way and it's going to be something that you know, uh, it's the universe is, even if there are difficult things, other difficult things happening in your life, somehow, if you look, uh, somehow another person is helping you, somehow another uh, individual in your life, or maybe counseling, seven house rules counseling, go to speak with someone one to one, because Jupiter is the planet of wisdom and deeper understanding and clarity. Someone can help you gain more clarity like a counselor, like an advisor. Because let's not forget that Saturn is transiting your 8th house since last year, 2018, but already it continues in 2019 as well, and that's considered one of the most difficult transits of Saturn in the 8th house. Because the 8th house is the house of sudden changes, like a divorce, death, um, sudden loss of a part of your identity. And Saturn there slows down this process a lot and Saturn often it means that we're working through some trauma that we're working when it's transiting the eighth house through some very deep painful feelings but the change is very slow because Saturn slows down everything it passes it touches so so it's hard to have access to deep transformational healing like the eighth house is the house of the bridge that you're trying to pass from one side of the river to the other from one side of your life to another side of your life and you're on the bridge but it's kind of slippery or it's kind of let's say it's 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 hard you know <laughs> there is some blocks there that you have to overcome to move over the bridge so it's noticed psychologically that it's a tough period that psychologically because usually there is some kind of a uh, uh, a person that is going through some deep emotional um experiences that uh that they might feel a bit too stuck and unable to heal quickly from them when saturn is in the eighth house but it saturn still makes you work through that but it's slower it's more burdensome it takes about two years and you might feel like you're stuck in some way psychologically mentally as well um or in some situations and this Jupiter in the seventh house is gonna help you through a counselor for example as I said or someone that is there for you to share someone that you can receive a help from a very close friend that can be there as an advisor for you as an ear to listen to share with you during this time of slow very slow and deep transformations but that it feels so constipated and so slow that you feel like you'll never be able to bridge that gap somehow uh, but on another level, Saturn in the being in the nine, in the eighth house can freeze any big shocks as well, and any big crisis, which is what the eighth house rules. So it means that if you're in a process of divorce, it might slow down. It might stop like this final crisis situation of divorce and breaking down, for example. Or if you're in the process of some kind of a, uh, even extreme cases like uh, the development of some congenital disease, which is what eighth house rules, well, Saturn is going to slow down degenerative processes. And even in the process of dying, I'm not saying you're dying, this is very extreme, but Saturn will slow down this process of death, but also the process of rejuvenation. On the negative side, Saturn transiting the eighth house indicates that if you're in, in need of quick recovery, because eighth house is quick recoveries. Uh, and, and um, regeneration, rejuvenation, Saturn slows down. So if you're recovering from a surgery, for example, it might take longer time and more effort when Saturn transits the 8th house. If you're recovering from a heartbreak, it might take longer. You might be stuck a little bit longer to work through those feelings for another year. You, year and a half, if you're recovering from 
death of someone loved again saturn the eighth house slows down those processes it makes you it slows them down so you can look at this more like slowly and more deeply and methodically so you can take time to research life after death for example or to research uh matters about heartbreak and trauma and to read on such things and to ruminate and to think saturn is the asket the ascetic the ascetic is that how it's called someone who basically it's energy that wants you to withdraw into from the world a little bit and think about those deep Topics of the eighth house, life after death, makes you think about trauma and healing from trauma. Makes you think about uh, uh, the the big, some of the big and, and scary things about life. And if you are patient, wherever Saturn is, you have to be very patient. Any transformations are happening slowly in your life now and thankfully you're receiving the support of possibly a new partner can who help you who can help you deal with some more traumatic emotional experiences and if you're feeling stuck because of jupiter in the seventh house also jupiter in the seventh house can bring new clients as well of some sort uh because it's uh, contracts agreements you know and i forgot to say if you yourself work in any career that's considered seventh house if you're a relationship counselor or advisor of some sort or if you're a lawyer which is the seventh house so if you're a contract maker if you're a negotiator diplomat if you're someone who works in design actually this year can be really good for you because jupiter the seventh house rules all of those things design you know everything that i mentioned uh jupiter will bless you so anyone in such careers can expand their business can grow their influence and jupiter transiting the seventh house can also make you more popular uh, uh if you want to grow your following and have a wider reach to more audience because seventh house is the audience as well jupiter there will expand it and actually some interesting foreign people will appear in your life people that are very different than you uh in the sense that they have a higher experience and more knowledge than you more knowledgeable and more noble people will come into your life or person someone with better higher education or better knowledge like a teacher figure appears in your life like a benevolent teacher figure who is really helping you while you're working through this slow transformation of the trauma of the past of saturn transiting the eighth house uh, because usually when saturn transit starts transiting the eighth house at the start of the transit which happened maybe for some of you already 2018 there is some big crisis that happens it might be like the something that's more shocking that's life changing something that turns your life around and then it slows down so then saturn slows down the processes of total change in your life it starts them with a big crisis initially and then it slows them down so you can look more consciously into that transformation and so you don't basically lose your head in this crisis you know in the process of widowhood or divorcing or losing one big part of your like a part of your it feels like the crisis that was initiated for many of you was like losing one part of who you thought you are of your identity might have been through a relationship through career of some sort but usually saturn trans in the seven eighth house starts with some crisis and look back to the past maybe it's happening now or maybe a little bit like a year ago when saturn entered the eighth house and then it freezes those processes but that's good because you totally lose yourself if 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 it was too fast spinning you know because the crisis that initiated saturn kind of freezes the full disintegration of your uh persona and ego uh because it slows down the transformational processes once it's it kickstarts those transformations but then it slows down this process so you can integrate it slowly and and like they say sometimes people that have saturn there when it's transited usually something kind of quite shocking and crisis prone starts happening in their life first and then they um uh, for example for me it was i lost my job and for, for for 10 years that i had not 10 years but seven eight years and uh, i had to start a huge transformation into a new career and i i lost a relationship at the same time when saturn started the transiting my eighth house and uh, i was a bit like you know 
what, what's happening. Everything is changing, but then it slowed it down. And for the next two and a half years, it was, um, uh, I'm glad it did because it, you might lose yourself <laughs> with too many changes. And uh, so it kind of freezes the psychological, uh, the, the too fast psychological shift from one state to another, it slows it down so you can keep your sanity basically so don't think saturn gate is only bad uh it's a slow die off process that is happening but you might feel impatient sometimes um you might feel stuck in certain situations of life when saturn is in the eighth house because you really want to go on the other side but you have to be a bit more patient for the deep psychological transformation first to happen before you can cross over on the other side and again as i said if you're going through some grieving of a process of more emotional pain inside it you might find it a bit slower moving but by the time saturn goes towards the end of your eighth house it will resolve itself so just patience that means by 2020 very likely uh you you start the healing will be complete but it's a slow process healing when jupiter then 2020 moves into your nine eighth house gemini this is when bam like pain trauma it goes away like oh heartbreak what is it it's, it's gone of a sudden jupiter gives fast healing transformations fast big changes but in an easy way from one state of uh being an identity to another this eighth house of big changes and transformations got gets lit up but you you it's easy for you to leave behind you're not like dragging some trauma that you're working through like during saturn in the eighth house but again, you're going to have support from someone. It might be your husband, it might be your wife, it might be a new partner, it might be a very wise new person that enters into your life who gives you a higher perspective, who you can talk with on high-minded topics. This is Jupiter in the seventh house, uh, who brings new belief systems and horizons and perspective, or even like a travel companion, who knows. Uh, and new love, again, as I said. But because Saturn slows down the previous transformation process is if you're in the middle of divorce, for example, it might be slowed down and take longer than you think, but at the same time, a new person might appear when Jupiter is in the seventh house. Uh, or you might actually, Saturn in the eighth house can slow down the divorce and Jupiter in the seventh can repair the relationship. So this catastrophic total, oh, not catastrophic, but total changes in, in, is kind of slowed down by Saturn and Jupiter strengthens the relationship. Um, and as I said, counseling with another can help through this period as well. Uh, and, and and basically, it's good for you to make new connections and they such will appear. It's good for you to collaborate with others if you can, to partner because good things are coming from this. Maybe you won't see immediately financial results from that because Saturn is in the eighth house, which rules results of partnering together with someone. The second from anything is results. Uh, and the material results in particular, but new beneficial partnerships are appearing or contracts or agreements with people over 2019. Accept them and the financial results will come 2020. When Jupiter enters your eighth house and Saturn will still be there, but Jupiter has a manifesting power and then materially you'll be able to receive some uh, some reward from 2020 by joining you by some contract you've made in 2019 by some business collaboration worker collaboration by uh, or if you're in the middle of divorce to get like for example payment from your partner or the money that is out for you and i've also heard and seen that when saturn transit and don't forget though saturn is in its own sign so it's still gonna manifest in regards to this eighth house it's still gonna give eventually healing but it's a slow one with efforts it's still and especially what what gets slowed down is people who are psychic uh, who are um, uh, healers they can feel frustrated when saturn transits the eighth house because those regenerative forces that they used to see miraculous healing slow down and patients are not susceptible so much to this deep transformation or if if you are some kind of a reiki healer as well you can feel like the slowing down of this energy or if you're kind of a, a psychologist or an astrologer who's working with a client and trying to help them overcome 
big, uh, you know, to to deal with recovery and overcoming psychological issues and emotional and changes. You might find it more frustrating that there is kind of a delay uh, and slowing down of those healing processes that you're used to seeing happen fast. So if you're in any of those fields, you can feel more frustrated without with the Saturn in the eighth house. But at the same time, you're getting more clients because Jupiter is in your seventh house, so more outreach to wider audience. Uh, but at the same time, you might feel that the the work on a personal deep level with another is uh, if you're in any of those healing fields, you know, uh, or, um, it's it's a bit of a slower process. And also, if you're someone who's studying the occult, like astrology. Uh, like tarot, you might have some kind of crisis of faith when Saturn transits the eighth house. You might start wanting more practical proof of this, and because Saturn is very pragmatic in the eighth house, is the mysteries and uh, kind of mysterious, uh, mysterious processes. Uh, it's like the school of Harry Potter, the eighth house, like someone said. And you might feel a bit of a frustration with not with studies going in regards going more slowly in regards to such occult matters and topics or scientific research of some sort might be going slower. But at the same time, Saturn is in its own sign. Yes, it's going slow, but it's going very in depth. So just patience with those eighth house matters. Uh, and uh, you will go much deeper and you'd understand uh, after repeated tries over and over, uh, you'd understand that topic you're trying to investigate in depth. And uh, the clarity, the total clarity and things falling together will come 2020 when Jupiter enters this 8th house. Also, Saturn transiting the 8th house can give a blockage to some kind of a secret relationship, 8th house rules secret relationship, you know, uh, and it might kind of, you might be criticized about it or get a lot of social pressure in regards to it. Uh, I know it's secret, so how people know, but, <laughs> you know, generally. Or you might, it can come with quite a few responsibilities. While uh, uh, relationships that are legal and, the, you know, that are um, public, they will start thriving. Like non-relationship or public relationships or new relationships that are not secret in some way, whether personal or whether business, they'll start thriving while secret agreements and liaisons and relationship, which is the eighth house, will be more complicated. You might have to let go of one such relationship, for example, which will be a bit of a slow process for the healing. But don't worry, Ketu is also in your eighth house, so Ketu allows to release uh, and those crusts, you know, to release more as well uh and what else is the eighth house oh refinances mutual finances you can find out that they're a bit more slow down access to other people's resources whether it's mental help from them or whether it's um kind of material in particular can be frozen or slowed down for example you're expecting a money from someone or from a client or from uh, a loan it's going to be a difficult process to do it. You can still get it. Saturn is manifesting in Capricorn. Uh, many times people get a loan, I've seen, uh, but usually it will come with quite a few heavy duties and responsibilities. It will put you in some kind of a, uh, the loan that you get or support uh, or uh, support that you get from another will come with, um, with conditions. And those conditions can in in depth you a bit for a longer time. It might have to be worked through for longer time than you expect. And that's why we also often say don't take a loan when Saturn is transiting the eighth house, because it can be it will be one that is paid off very slowly. But if this is your goal, if you want to take a loan that is paid off of over 30 years, then Saturn the eighth house transiting is going to materialize it. But just remember it, it's gonna come with quite more strict conditions than you expected. Uh, and uh, uh, yes, conditions basically, but uh, it does manifest. Saturn in its own sign can manifest a loan, uh, and especially the loans that can come to you is through some kind of very in a very lawful, institutionalized way, rather than just on a promise. Like someone will say, "Oh, here is this money," I'll prom you know, um, and and or with certain conditions on the side that you have to give something back for it. Uh, but uh, and and any kind of support you receive from another material in some way you know uh, will come with conditions to it but at the same time 
good people are coming in your life right now. Uh, and possibly you can get material support from them when Jupiter enters the eighth house, but good people are entering. Do collaborate with them. Just be careful that finances, people worry more about finances when Saturn transits the eighth house, especially doing something with, you can have like heavier responsibilities about mutual resources with a partner, but that can be a great time if you are saving for something to invest or to put lots of money with your partner, whether it's in a business whether it's in a property, where your uh, finances that is yours and your partners together, yes, it will come, some, some loan can come, it comes with heavy responsibility, it makes you worry and stress, but it doesn't mean it's going to be a bad thing if you get it. It's just, it's more laborious, it's not so easy, you have to persevere, you have to get connections, you have to maybe try a few times, because Saturn is about trying a few times before you get it. So yes, you can still get material, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, access to other people's resources. You can still make money together with your partner, but somehow it is uh, with more efforts. And sometimes people say like their partner uh, assets were frozen when Saturn was transiting gate house, so the partner was not working, so they had to contribute uh, the, the native themselves, the person who has Saturn in gate house transit, has to be the main... Um, supporter so to speak during this period and usually uh you know it's it, it needs to happen sometimes and to be honest the south node is also transiting there and they conjunct this year which means you have to let go of some support from another person you have to let go of some money that for example you've saved together uh with your partner business or personal uh, maybe because you're investing somewhere maybe in some worst case scenario because there is some loss unfortunately more serious financial loss that happens uh, together uh, but there has to be you have to let it go but don't worry because the north node is going to be in your second house the whole year so it means like new financial opportunities for money are coming that you make personally uh, and while with partners is a bit more effort it, you need to work harder through it but you personally will have new opportunities to create financial uh, new sources of financial income and you can actually start using some quite innovative and even taboo techniques to get that and actually because Rahu is becomes very passionate and Rahu in the second house becomes very passionate about making more money and so there is money there is that somewhere maybe you're investing together maybe some investments uh, the money that you're expecting from some investments are getting delayed because the eighth house is more difficult currently. Maybe the results that you're that the promotion of your husband or wife it's getting delayed, so it takes way more work with Saturn Transiting Gate House. So the loan that you're expecting gets it's more hard work, but it's still all those things can manifest. But there is more worry with whatever Saturn is. You just might be worrying more about finances, especially mutual finances as a family unit or investments or resources with a business partner of some sort. And again, 2020 things will change, the wind will change, and things will really improve there. But currently, 2019, you are the one that can contribute. With Rahu, Rahu opens opportunity, and Rahu is very opportunistic and ma manifests materially. Rahu is the north node of the moon, and being in your second house makes you very passionate and excited about money, even though Saturn makes you worried about especially mutual resources. Uh, but at the same time, you discover new such sources you know and you might get very excited and fascinated with some kind of foreign objects or assets or even some kind of a uh, currency that is foreign to you or investing not invest but um, yes second house is where you put your money as well investing in something more risk-taking as well uh, and more risky <laughs> as they say or something that is maybe in a foreign country or in something that is more connected to more progressive new things uh, but some new source of income is coming and also some more cunning ways of making money because Rahu can be quite uh, opportunistic. It doesn't care how it gets it, whether it's moral or no, as long as it gets it. Just don't get, I mean, like, don't start being tricky on taxes because Saturn is in your eighth house, which is taxes, and there Saturn 
and with K2 you can lose through that. Saturn very quickly gives you the results of one's actions and if you do something dodgy with taxes or mutual resources it will quickly be discovered and you can have some losses through that. But when it comes to your own personal money uh, you can find some very nifty and crafty way of making money that will surprise yourself as well you can you can even take risks that you haven't taken at other times and usually Rahu can bring sudden rise in finances as well so it's very interesting and kind of controversial situation when it comes to resources for Gemini's especially Gemini, Gemini rising people um, yes new resources are coming in exciting and taboo more forbidden ways even or in with with some involvement of foreigners or with some involvement with some very new fields which is what Rahu is something innovative new that they personally find and uh, and there is increase and also there can be fascination with foreign objects or foreign uh, second house rules uh, the cultural heritage so with foreign cultural heritage with foreign um, uh, customs and uh, you know traditions of some sort or foreign foods you can develop fascination with foreign foods when Rahu is in the second house so foreign sensual pleasures as well or uh, you can get very uh, the second house rules the face and the skin the face in on the face the eyes the mouth and Rahu is about enhancing so that can be a good time if you want to enhance something on your face even surgically because Rahu is about changes as well but enhancing uh, making more glamorous uh, and that's usually sometimes people when they want to do something whether it's lifting whatever on their face um, often I've seen it when it corresponds to Saturn transiting through the second house sorry Rahu uh, and Rahu transiting through the second house, if there is something in your face or skin as well, it can, you, your skin tone can get more exotic or you can try something different with your hair, the second house rules the hair, uh, the, th the ways we adorn ourselves, make makeup, make ourselves beautiful, you can start experimenting and trying new things like that, Uranus is experimental, it tries foreign, different, uh, new styles, you know, and you can start changing even the hair color or something, the face, the, the whole shape of the face, you know. You can, you can start looking more foreign yourself or some exotic ways, some exotic masks or exotic foods that you start doing, like more exotic ways of adornment. But I was talking about money, the other meaning of the second houses. And again, Rahu has a dark side. It's also pollutants, things that are not meant to be in the body. So you might experiment or start taking, imbibing and ingesting things that are more prone to make you, uh, and especially more addictive substances, like uh, things that are, um, you know, and Saturn in the 8th house, the 8th house is the house of healing from poisons. It slows those, those things down a little bit. So I would advise you, don't take substances that are too addictive that or that are too... Uh, polluted or that have a natural substances in them because until Saturn moves out of your eighth house it will be hard to detox let's say and it's, it's a very slower process uh, but it also Saturn slows down the poisoning process as well but you might be tempted to try very exotic new things like foods and things that you put in your mouth that you haven't put before and hopefully there are no poisons of course um, and you can become very passionate about the food. I'm not saying that you're going to eat lots. Well, Rahu is like a mouth without a tail, without a body. So it can develop a strong appetite, Rahu, in the second house. In extreme cases, it can develop some addictions with food. And hopefully that's not you. But it can develop a fascination on the positive scale with what you eat, with experimenting with new, very unusual and uh, style of eating for you. For example, you can try uh, going something extreme and uh, uh, trying fruit diet or something like that, or vegan diet. You know, all those will be interesting and fascinating topics for you. Uh, plus the topic of creating material financial stability. But again, this eighth house is the one that is more that is most difficult. The whole 2019, the South Node is there, Saturn is there. Yes, there will be releasing of certain traumas, but it's happening more slowly. And yes, there will be 
uh, there might be some, as I said, in worst case scenario, some losses to another person or having to let go of, or having to save and restrain on your finances because of some mutual, some investment or some mutual resources that we talked already about. But the best help is coming from Jupiter. And we said that a beneficial partnership of some sort, beneficial relationship, maybe meeting love, maybe meeting the person who is meant to be your wife or husband or a temporary teacher, but who's going to help you. And some of you, though, we have to be more careful, Gemini, because Neptune is making difficult aspect to this Jupiter. And that's basically from the degrees, um, from around the 14th degree to around the 17th degree. So if you're born, remember I told you to check the degrees. If you're born, actually Neptune goes down to the 19th degree as well. Um, but I forgot to tell you who is going to very likely meet very important partner. So if you have ascendant to a lesser degree sun or moon as well, at those degrees, from 14 to 25 degrees, Jupiter will transit all those degrees. So check, you know, do you have Ascendant on the moon in Gemini from 14 to 25 degrees, then Jupiter affects you three times, which means that you're much more likely, for example, to uh, than the other Geminis to meet a relationship that stays for, that turns into a marriage or to a committed relationship or business deal that goes through very successfully, not just something that appears quickly as an opportunity and disappears because Jupiter will pass over those degrees three times, once forward, once back, once forward. So you, it will have more time to implant those beneficial, positive influences that come to you from another person or through a partnership or through a relationship or through kind of more popularity, it, 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 you have more time to make it happen. Uh, so you definitely know if, if Jupiter trans there three times, it can be the time you get married, the time you meet love, the time, you know, some very big change in your life in regards to relationship in a positive way. If you have someone ascendant before the 14th degree or after the 25th degree, it will be a one-off. It will last for about shorter period it's it still was going to introduce some of those positive changes but it might not be as potent but at the same time some of you have to be a bit more careful those who have their uh, those who have you see neptune actually is making a square aspect which is a difficult aspect this year from in january in particular those who are from born uh, from 14 degrees, around 14 degrees, they have to be more careful. Uh, January, because Jupiter, Neptune squares those degrees in January for the last time till the 16th degree. So from January till March, if you have 14 till 16 degrees, 30 minutes, I don't know if to put the minutes there, but Neptune moves very slowly. So just for this planet, I'm putting the degrees. So from January till March, if you have Sun, Moon or Ascendant at 14 till 16 and a half degrees, I advise you to be more cautious. New people will enter your life. Yes, Jupiter is in your seventh house, but there might be some... For if you're 14 degrees, especially in January, if you're 15 degrees, February, if you're 16 degrees, it's March. So that's how you see it. So it depends which degree you are. But yes, new people will enter your life, but at the same time, there will be possibility to be misled. For you not to, maybe some promises can be made to you that people cannot keep up. And maybe your expectations will be higher than the reality. So there might be some disappointment as well, because Neptune is about bringing in some illusion when it's a difficult aspect. It's about creating some kind of bubble uh, and unrealistic or too idealistic view. So if a partner comes into your life now, or uh, if uh, just be careful because you might not be seeing everything or you might be projecting what you're expecting on them and that's not the reality. So seek more counsel and advice 
in regards to such people. If you have to sign some contract or agreement or collaboration and you have those degrees from 14 to 16, from January to March, or if you have those other degrees from 16, 13 degrees to 19 degrees in Gemini, from March to the end of the year, you have to be more cautious. Every What I'm talking about, let me move it here. March to December, actually, for you it will continue if you're 16, 30 to 19 degrees, almost to the end of 2019, this thing. Because Neptune takes almost two years to pass those degrees. These are the degrees you have to be more cautious about. If you're born on them, if you're 14 to 16, 30, the first part of the year is more dangerous. But even the 16 degree can feel it later again from March to December because Neptune comes back again and uh, squares those degrees in September uh, approximately. So the 14, 15 degrees, only the first two months are more careful that you might be misled or you might things might not be as you expect. There might be dissolution of some relationship or you might be misled or maybe there can be something very beautiful and romantic with someone, but it might not be realistic and it might, it might have something hidden or something subversive there it might have something that it's unsustainable in some way unrealistic and it can dissolve after that uh, uh, or just through idealistic as i said uh, but those degrees from 16 onwards from 16 till 19 they have to be careful in their relationship for the next two years uh because Neptune is squaring the Sun, Moon, or Ascendant. And it's not always the relationships that will be affected. Um, it's And sometimes it can, if, if it's your Ascendant that is of those degrees, 16 to 19, or if it's your Moon in particular, which is emotional connections, or if you're a woman, your Sun, which is men, be careful not to be misled by men or males or bosses or authority figures. They can promise you something for your career and it can be like slip out of your fingers. You might start getting thinking, oh, I can achieve this, the sun. If it's your sun in those degrees, you can think like, oh, I'm so excited. Uh, this opportunity is coming because Neptune is doing it from the 10th house of career. But because it's squaring your sun, it might come out to be unrealistic and slip away from you unless you're doing some spiritual work or some healing work, which is Neptune, or some work connected to charity and helping others, or some work connected to uh, art, artistic, like imaginative work. If you're in those fields, actually this can be a very, very inspirational period for you. Even the difficult aspect of Neptune can bring you success, actually. I've seen it even with actors, for example. Robert Pattinson became a huge star when Neptune squared his son. So if you're in those more creative or spiritual fields, oh, this can be the time. Uh, there can be some confusion in regards to your identity. There can be some confusion in regards to what you want out of life because Neptune creates fog if you're on those degrees. Even the 14th, they've been feeling it for a year and a half, 14, 15, 16, until the 19th. But there can be confusion, some misunderstanding, some something unrealistic. You might be feeling at a loss. Where do I want to go? What career do I want? Uh, and it's a bit hard to manifest material things in a material way if you have those degrees. And as I said, when I mention degrees, it's very important because you feel it. Yes, you're going to feel the other influences as well, but this becomes a predominant. So if, and if it's your moon, it can be that you emotionally feel confused and lost about your feelings and about your needs and what it is. And maybe your intuition can be misleading in some way as well. Also, women in your life can disappear or they can dissolve a relationship can be dissolved or a family situation can be dissolved or there can be some undermining currents in regards to and some subversive or, or hidden processes and developments happening in your private personal life or oh, even with the moon is property like some erosive processes happening on the property and it can also mean relocation to foreign country and stuff like that 
um, losing your foundation, Neptune dissolves, the moon is foundation, or if it's your son, as I said, it can be with your career, with important male figures that there is those erosive or dissolving influences, and you feel like things are out of your control, and no matter what you try, it's like, you feel like it's out of my hands, it's powers way beyond me, Neptune rules the powers that are invisible powers that a karm karmic that are put in action from before and you can feel like you're not in you're not steering the ship so to speak it's kind of you're at the mercy of that storm so you have to trust that process and not try to control things if you're having a neptune transits whether it's to ascendance and the moon the more you try to control things the more you think it depends on your choice it's not you have to during neptune transits and periods you have to adopt an attitude of let go and let God. I'll trust this process. And you, you, you. Uh, my best friend just went. She has from 10 to 14 degrees her moon, her ascendant, her mercury. And she said those four years, because it lasted for her four years. It's like always before my life would go according to what I planned. I'll meet the people. I knew I would always put them at the right place where I wanted them. She said I had no control now. It, I felt like you, and you become very, you can easily fall in love. You can easily kind of get susceptible into uh, getting involved with secret things as well or into more uh, mysterious or into more, uh, and you can feel like a bit direction, directionless and unclear about yourself. Uh, but she says, like, I learned something from this process and I learned that uh, it's not always that we have free will. We do have at certain moments in our life, yes, uh, in a lot of moments. But when Neptune is around, no. <laughs> when Neptune is around, we learn what it is to let go and to let God. And we learn what it is to become an observer. And basically, it's like this boat without, without sails that you have to, the, in the middle of a storm that is being swayed here and there. Uh, okay, and you have to learn to trust that process and that God or the universe will take you out to out of that storm or out of this confusion. And again, who's, and one thing is very good though, Geminis tend to be quite intelligent and practical in many cases. So this Neptunian influence hopefully is not going to blur their mind. Uh, for those degrees, I'm talking just those degrees. It's a very small number of people, but I needed to give you more specific breakdown so you're careful. So do more spiritual work. Do more uh, Try initiating big things not recommended during Neptune influences uh, or initiating... And it might be hard to initiate or materialize things unless it's in the field of the spiritual, the artistic, the imaginative, the healing arts. Do such activities. Even if you're some accountant somewhere or work at KPMG or something, to go through this period of Neptune, you have to get, you have to get involved with such activities. Otherwise, you might get lost, you know. We might get too frustrated. Anyway, uh, so those are the people that only have to be more careful. Again, there will be someone who is helping them. Jupiter is in their seventh house. But they might be misled about some other things in their life. Uh, so Pluto and Uranus are not affecting Gemini in any way with degrees. So at least those two other crazy planets are not affecting you. But Neptune. <laughs> I love Neptune, but... Um, yeah, that's when I had Neptune transits. I just could not, my, I was lost being in love with the wrong person and yearning and longing. Neptune brings all those things. All right. And of course, there are the eclipses and the eclipses in your horoscope, they're happening on the 5th of January, which means that January or even already December, after that January, February, some very important developments can be happening in regards to this eighth house because the eclipse is happening in the eighth house with insurances with inheritance so a month before the 5th of january and a few months after inheritances insurances as i said saturn can slow those things down but some important developments can be happening there uh loans uh mutual resources sudden changes in life uh sudden transformational changes uh and also there'll be a lunar eclipse uh, the beginning on the 21st of January in Leo, which in your case, 
that's what it is, it's your third house. So, eh, that's nothing special. I don't think you'll feel it, to be honest. It's not effective. And then there is a big solar eclipse again in Cancer, which comes in around July. So maybe June, July, August, September, October. You can have powerful new beginnings in regards to finances and material things in your life, like new source of income or new kind of uh, material goal that you develop and that you can manifest, but it's a manifesting one. You get to get some things while the previous eclipse in January it can take something away from you because it's a south node caused eclipse in the eighth house of other people's resources, sudden transformations and changes. Uh, and there is another eclipse with Ketu in December. So yeah, the topics that we talked about, the eighth house is very active. Uh, all right. So there are three Keto eclipses around this year. Fantastic. Um, yes, lots of releasing happening there. On the, actually, those eclipses can help remove some of the stagnation of Saturn in regards to the healing processes. So you can have sudden access to some of those healing processes, so fast spinning changes. Uh, but Saturn, again, is slowing something down there. And we talked about that. I don't want to repeat myself too much. Very important periods for Gemini, of course, is always the retrograde periods of Mercury, the planet that rules you. And this year, and this is always when Mercury goes retrograde, when some very important events are happening in your life. And they can be a bit more frustrating because they require more work, but they all usually indicate something important you're working on, something that you're have to put more effort on something that you have to put your a more unique touch on and usually the results are three times more lasting and positive uh, when this process finishes so for you there are three retrograde periods to pay attention to one is in march most of march basically from fifth to almost the end the other one is july from the seventh till the end and the other one is november from the beginning till the 20th so march july and november these are three periods when you feel and thankfully there are no other retrograde planets of the like saturn and venus that really make change that are very, really make stressful things so these are the three retrograde planets this year for you, what you know around those periods, something important is brewing in your life. Actually, the March one starts already from 19th of February and concludes in April, the middle of April. So from the middle of February till the middle of April, it's when Mercury is going through the same degrees three times. So in this period, you're doing something important in regards to your career because it's happening in your 10th house you might be completing some project fixing some things there some old job or project can be coming back for it to be perfected to be dusted out improved in some way uh, you might be uh, also changing some uh, the direction in regards to your career there might be some very important negotiations or conversations that you're doing with institutions or authority figures that will be determining for the direction of your career it might be also some kind of a uh, if you're working on you might be required to use a lot of your skills which is what mercury is communicative or whatever skills you're working with uh, which can transform your social status and reputation and, and uplift it so by the end by april the, by the middle of april when mercury has concluded all this uh, the, the the most intense work is in march but by the middle of April, you might have a much more higher and better social status, for example. You might have completed some project that gives you better reputation. Or if something was not going well with your career, you might have addressed it by then and tried to fix it. Um, or especially if it's not a situation that uh, uh, is resolvable, you might have changed the direction of your career in some way. All right, then in July, the July retrograde is active already from the 20th of June till the 15th of August. The full process completes. It's happening partly in your second house. So you're revisiting and rebudgeting and refinancing again. And this is during the eclipse as well, by the way. The eclipse this is happening in the second house. So there will be some new beginning in regards to finances. But also you are at the same time, uh, first before that, before the eclipse, it starts a period that you are really uh, have to rebudget, or there might be 
certain changes that you have to do with your finances, how you spend, what you do, I advise you don't make big splurges around the retrograde period, which is in July, uh, unless it's for something old already that you have started. You might have to do some corrections with your finances in some way, but at the same time, new opportunities will appear because of the eclipse also in your second house financially. Uh, and then the final retrograde period is happening for you, Gemini, in your sixth house, of course, in the sixth house, and that's November. So you will be uh, in November reworking, and basically, it's already starting to, you're going to start feeling the influence from the middle of October to the 7th of December. It's when the whole process is. But this is the period when you're going to, uh, Gemini, that some of you might rethink your employment, for example. Some of you might change the conditions of their working environment. There might be the need to, uh, because the sixth house is work environment, and even colleagues, they say there might be some extra efforts that you have to put there, some important conversations that you have to do. There might be some um, more hostile conversations as well. This often happens when Mercury is retrograde in the sixth house. Uh, and you have to... It might be more stressful because the environment is not as balanced and can be feeling more tense and that there is more attacking or criticism coming. And also it can indicate like some work project that you are putting final finishing touches, that you are that you're given more work, that you discover some mistakes in the project that you have to re-examine and retouch. But on a positive level, it can mean like an old work opportunity can come to you to be redone or some old work project that... You might be completing it and having to put a lot more extra effort and fix some problems there as well. Also, though, it's your health, the sixth house, so you might be more susceptible to certain states of imbalance in your health while Mercury is retrograde in November in your sixth house. And you might have to re-examine your health habits and maybe make a new plan and change your strategy with your health uh, if something and your diet in regards to um, the disease or whatever situation out of balance that you're experiencing. But also, it, do it doesn't mean that you necessarily need to get some sickness. You might just get more intense about doing some workout routine and about plan a new routine plan or a new juicing plan or something like that. This is the more positive way it can manifest. So there we go for you, Gemini. It's, I mean, like you say, wow, what a downer this 2019 is going to be. Um, don't worry, everyone is getting those planets somewhere. And don't forget, Jupiter is very manifesting in your seventh house. This is where your biggest joint support is coming from a relationship, from something good happening through a partner or through uh, reaching wider influence. Oh, by the way, Jupiter is going to send trying to 11th house. New friends can come into your life and to your third house. New associates, um, new skills as well. So these are the things where you can look forward to get positive and uplifted results and expand through them. So collaborate with others, build bridges, you know, uh, go out more into the public because explore new belief systems with another person or just reach out to people. You'll be surprised. There'll be some really benevolent, interesting characters that are going to help you. So thank you so much. And if you'd like a month by month breakdown without the astrological mumbo jumbo, just uh, my teacher is writing those. So she'll be saying like, oh, if you're born on June the 3rd, this month, this, this, this. If you're born on June the 4th, this month, this, this. She's making it like that similarly. So you can check the written prognosis, which will be soon in the on the website. So thank you.